Hi guys, this is Joshua LaForge here at Channel Islands High School in Oxnard, California. Um, and I'm going to be talking real quick about how to solve problems related to a pulley for the AP Physics C Mechanics exam. Um, now, we've used things related to torque before, um, and we're going to add a new equation for torque um, today, which is how we relate torque to acceleration. So here we have torque is equal to the moment of inertia, or the rotational inertia, times the angular acceleration. So this is Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, except it's been applied to rotational motion. Torque equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration. And this is going to be our key to solving problems that are related to a pulley. Okay, so let's get started with a basic pulley problem. Um, in this case, we're going to assume that the pulley has mass, but that there is no friction. And so we're going to have to worry about the rotational inertia of this pulley, even in this case, whereas before we might not have. Now, this pulley is attached to a mass that's going to be dropped, and that dropping mass is going to be turning this pulley. And if the pulley were massless, this object would fall at negative 10 meters per second squared, but because the pulley has mass and it has rotational inertia, it's going to resist that acceleration and so it's going to slow down the mass slightly. Um, in order to figure out an a situation like this, the first place we want to start is by considering all of the forces that are on all the objects with a free body diagram. So for the pulley, first of all, we know that there is um, the pulley has a force of weight of its own. I'm going to draw this off to the side. So we know the pulley has a force of weight. We also know that the pulley experiences a normal force that holds it in place and balances out the force of weight, so these two cancel. Finally, we know that there's a force of tension that is applied to the side of the pulley um, from the string. Um, linearly, we can say that this force of tension is also canceled by the force of weight. So linearly, the net force on the pulley is going to equal zero. I know that's true because the acceleration of the pulley is zero. And if the acceleration of the pulley is zero, it must have no net force on it. That's always true. It's in equilibrium. I can do the same thing thinking about the mass itself. I know that the mass has a force of weight. that is acting on it. And I also know that the mass has a force of tension that is acting on it. Now, on the hanging mass, I know that there actually is a net force. The net force isn't zero here because the hanging mass is actually accelerating. And so in this case, I know that the net force is going to be determined by the difference between the force of weight and the force of tension. So if I have force of weight minus force of tension, that will give me the net force on the hanging mass. And that will allow me to figure out the acceleration of the hanging mass. But the problem is, I usually don't know the force of tension on these objects. So how am I going to do that? Well, the only way I can figure out the force of tension on the string is by including information about the pulley and what it's doing in rotation. And that will require our new equation. 